Welcome to the SB Grid YouTube channel. Software tutorials by developers, lectures by structural biologists, unique content brought to you by SB Grid. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining today. This is Jason Key at SB Grid in Boston. Uh, this is our first webinar of uh, the season. We're kicking off our, our fall series. Our whole schedule is on sbgrid.org slash webinars. There's a button there that you can click. Uh, we've got uh, a good lineup coming. We've still got a couple of slots in uh, early 2024. So if there's titles or things you want to hear about, reach out, let us know. You can email us um, and uh, yeah, tell us what, you, what you're using, what you want to hear about what software you'd like to see a webinar on, or if you've got a software title that you develop and it's in SB Grid or you'd like it to be in SB Grid, um, let us know. We'd like to, to hear from you and, uh, and see if uh, a webinar would be a good match. Um, let's see. Uh, as we go here, we're gonna, uh, we've got chat for questions. We've got a new QA feature here that we, uh, in our webinar mode, we haven't used this in the past, so uh, we'll give it a shot. See how it goes. Uh, I think it could be useful. I think it's basically just the chat feature, but with some upvoting functions and uh, um, and some uh, better question management uh, features. But it's it's very similar to the chat function we've used before. Um, and uh, there'll be time for questions at the end. Um, and you can unmute and ask your question yourself, or you can just type in chat and we can ask on your behalf. And um, with that, let's get started. So uh, we're lucky to have uh, uh, Pablo Canesa joining us today. So you're in Madrid right now, it's still, right? Like, so you're at the, the National uh, Research Council in, uh, in Madrid and uh, Pablo's team developed Cypion. So Cypion is a massive effort to take uh, cryo EM and cryo ET pipelines from various different software packages and its own uh, I, I guess I'd call XMIP sort of its own sort of internal um, processing and make these pipelines all work under one roof with, uh, uh, and so today uh, Pablo's gonna talk about uh, and Tomo, which is geared toward uh, cryo-electron tomography. And, and so uh, his title is Cord Cryo-Electron Tomography, Software Integration, Reproducibility and Validation. Uh, Pablo, take it away. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Uh, thank you for for giving me this chance to explain what we do in, in Madrid, but not only in Madrid, but, in, but this is a project we have, that already all other developers have have joined. So it's not just a single location effort. Um, so let's go ahead. In summary, I'm going to introduce the tomography workflow in case anyone is not familiar with it. I'm going to talk about briefly again about the image processing problems that. Uh, just um, means doing cryo-electron tomography. And then I'm going to present Tomo as a solution for these problems and some of the results. Um, so basically the, um, the workflow just goes like this. Uh, you start with um, movies that are acquired in the microscope and these movies are not independent like in SPA, but they are related. They have uh, different tilts. And the first step should be to correct the motion, the same you do for single particle analysis. Then you end up with single tilt images, like you see in the step two. And after this, because they are related, you have your tilt series, but they are not aligned. They, because of the acquisition process and the microscope imperfections, uh, you need to go through an alignment process of the tilt, uh, tilt images, which is um, shown in the step three. Uh, so once you have the alignment done, you are ready to reconstruct this and generate a 3D volume, which is the tomogram, uh, which in this tomogram, uh, you identify your particles of interest, then they are cut out, and then through alignment uh, methods, then you can generate an average with hopefully a good enough resolution to infer some biological problem there. Um, I must say there's a second workflow that doesn't go through subtomograph aging, which is what I explained in the previous slide, which basically is the same uh, 
first five steps, like you, you still need to generate the tomogram, but then you can go to a kind of um, segmenting the tomogram, trying to find out some semantic in the signal and trying to infer already um, biological uh, conclusions based on the location and, and yeah, of your particles of interest in the tomogram. Um, regarding image processing problems, so it's a multiple step image processing. You need to do many steps to reach your result. Um, currently, there's no single full stack software that does everything and has the best method, and probably this is never going to happen. Um, and probably you're going to make several attempts of the same step um, in your pipeline. So something doesn't work, then you try again, maybe different parameters, or maybe you win, you want to swap to another software to try if this other software is better than the one I'm currently using. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's obvious that you will deal with uh, several images. So you have the tin series movies, then you have the tin series, which is the stack of the tilt uh, series movies um, motion corrected. You have tomograms. You may have the noise tomograms. You may have um, sub tomograms and so on. So you are going to deal with a bunch of uh, image files. But not only this, you're going to deal with a, a big amount of metadata associated with those files. Uh, compared to single particle analysis, you, you have sampling rate, those, this is useful in, or, or common in single particle analysis or alignment information as well. But then you need to add um, tilt axis angle, tilt, tilt angle per, per each of the tilt. When you reconstruct a tomogram, you need to record what have you done to the tomogram like shifting in X or Y or padding your reconstruction. In case you want to go to some kind of tomogram, advanced tomogram processing that needs to go back to the TIL series and all this data is, is necessary to, to record. So basically you will end up using a mix of software. You probably need to install them. Um, you will need to convert images and metadata from one server to another. And with luck, there's a GitHub repository somewhere that can do this for you, but then you need to clone it, install it, and this is already something that you may not be um, ready to do or, or you need to learn to do it. Um, so either you have an excellent memory and you remember everything you've done, or you are a proverbial note keeper um, I'm none of those, or probably you will end up losing track of all your steps. And this will probably result in a poor description of your material and methods in your, uh, um, in your scientific article, uh, very far from fair principles. So uh, for those not familiar with the Scipion, uh, I'm going just to briefly introduce it, and then I will talk about the CPM tomo. Um, CPM does software in integration, does software installation. This is optional. Um, it links viewers, so it provides um, visualization uh, immediately of the results. You have um, traceability, so you, everything is traced and, and recorded. You have many workflow tools. You can repeat um, a set of steps. You can duplicate them. You can plan your executions and schedule them. You can have workflow templates. You can do a streaming processing. This might be more useful for facilities. You can label and color your boxes to organize your, your workspace. Believe me, this could be very, a project could be very complicated. Uh, and this, although it's a basic uh, functionality, it works. Um, you can have, Okay. Um, nice this. Yeah. Um, you can have manual and parametric subsetting, just um, reducing your set of information particles, whatever, to a smaller one to do some tests, for example. And you can have consensus methods to try to get an agreement of results of different um, methods. So um, 
let's simulate what you can do in a CPM here in a presentation. So you start with the terminal, and this is the, the last time you use the terminal when you use a CPM. You type a CPM, and then you are presented with a list of projects. Uh, if you want to create a project, you click on this button, you type your the name of your project, and then click on Create. This is where you will spend most of the time. This is an empty project. Uh, and here on the left, you will see um, all the methods you can uh, use in your project. In this case, it's filtered by SPA protocols. So you click in import movies, you're presented with a form. Each of the protocols have uh, different uh, parameters. This part is common for all of them, but the, the part below is different for each of them of the methods and then you populate this form in this case because it's an import movies you need to provide um, with the path where the movies are located uh, when you click in execute then you end up with a box saying that this is the the import movies uh, protocol and then you see here the output and the output it's not just the raw movies, it's a CPM representation. It's something that we have designed to hold the images and the metadata together. Um, so this output is what is used to, to be um, fed by the next protocol. So if I click in a motion correction protocol to add, uh, in this case, x flex align, um, then I need to click in this magnifier, and then I, I choose uh, whichever output is compatible in my project. In this case, I only have one, one output, and it's an output movies, and it's compatible. So I would select it, and then click in Execute, and then I will get that, my second box. And this will be running. Uh, and in this case, because this one works in the streaming, it can... Uh, register the output, but it's still working on, on the rest of the input. And, and then you do this, uh, you can do this with any other protocol. And you can imagine you end up with a graph like um, visualization. So um, going a bit in the details of what happens is basically we have our recipient representation in, in this red box, which basically is um, the information about the images. In this case, we are talking about the 2D particles. This is not tomography, but it applies to tomography as well. Um, so we have 2D images and, and the metadata related to these 2D images. And on any box, this will always happen. So we do a conversion step initially that it may or may not convert the images, depends on the software, if it's compatible with our images. And it will convert the metadata to the right format the software A needs. Uh, so if we're talking about Relion, this will be an SR file. If we're talking about Iman, this would be a probably CBOX file. These files could be HDF5. Um, so we are dealing with this kind of conversions uh, every day. Uh, then we call the software to do its job. And once it's finished, then we convert it back the output of software A, which is their images and their, their metadata to our, again, our representation of a CPM uh, that the CPM has defined. In this case, it's a 3D volume and, and the metadata related with the 3D volume. So let's uh, now concentrate on the CPM TOMO and the integration part. Um, so for importing there, other imports, but uh, if you start a project, um, you usually start with serial EM or EPU TOMO5 M docs. So we're compatible with both. We're aware that TOMO5, there are some glitches in the in the way it's generating the M doc file, but I'm sure they will fix this. Uh, and we already tolerate some glitches, but, but not all of them. Um, so we can import data, metadata uh, from serial EM and EPU. EPU TOMO5. Then in terms of software, we integrate more than 20 um, tomography software, and this is growing. Um, to name many of them, Motion Core, XMIP, iMod, CTFine, Iman, Nova CTF, TOMO 3D. Um, yeah, you, you can read them, but it's uh, what has ended up in our 
to-do list that sounded like interesting to integrate. Workflow tools. So we have consensus methods. We have subset filtering. This comes out of the box once you use Scipion. Uh, in terms of viewers, we integrate Daimon, Napari, Dynamo, viewers, Iman, XMIP, Scipion, Tomo. Scipion is for metadata visualization mainly. Tomobiz, which is a um, custom plugin for visualizing tomography data, Chimera X, and, and many more. Um, so let's jump in some some examples. In this case, it's not we are not aiming for um, excellent result, but just to show you the integration part of 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 a CPM or the capabilities of a CPM uh, Tomo. So this workflow start importing it starts importing till series, um, then it does some till series alignment with our Tomo. It reconstructs with Tomo 3D, and then it ends in rely on uh, workflow for for Sutomo averaging. So when importing, you will see this this uh, window. You basically, in a, as in any import file uh, protocol, you you provide the path and some acquisition details. And once you click in execute. And it finishes. You can see the output or check the output uh, with the tomography viewer. Um, this is I recommend to do a uh, exhaustive check here because all this information is critical later on. So be sure the recipient has understood your metadata properly. Uh, otherwise, uh, try to re-import, provide uh, more organized metadata. Uh, maybe report if there's a bit, if there's a bug, and you think everything is correct. But it's important to check that everything here makes sense. So we have here, for example, the acquisition order. As you can see, the serial till tangle, which is this one, was the first one acquired, and then this this follows um, a symmetric scheme acquisition. Uh, the till tangle uh, step is the correct one. Uh, the dose also makes sense based on the order. The images as well make sense, and you have a preview here. So important, check uh, your till series import before going any further. Um, right, you can you can visualize also the till series with uh, 3D mode. So metadata is not uh, clear here, but you can see the image and play with it uh, the same way you do with when you you see it in, in iMod. Um, so uh, another step would be to do the series alignment. This will be the form for our Tomo. And, and here, as as we've seen before, we are saying use this till series from iMod till series preprocess. This is the previous step. Um, and then we've populated these parameters uh, just Look, in this case, that we are not reconstructing the tomogram. We just want our tomo to to specify the alignment, and we don't want uh, our tomo reconstruction uh, because then I couldn't show you the tomo three D reconstruction. Basically, uh, right. The output of our, our tomo is basically the same as the input, but now this column transformation matrix is populated. Um, basically, this is what our tomo has done. It's just registering the the shift and orientation that has to be applied for it to each of the tilts to to align the tilt series. So with this information, we are ready to go to the next um, step that will be Tomo 3D. And for Tomo 3D, we feed it with our Tomo output. We populate uh, some parameters, and then we execute. And the output is, in this case, is shown with uh, Definder um, viewer. I think Definder is going to move to Napari. They are working on this. So soon, probably, this viewer will not be there. But it will be replaced by Napari. Um, right. Next step will be an import. In this case, it's a, a rely on Tomo import um, coordinates 3D. It's not that rely on generates 3D coordinates, but they provided this in the tutorial, and we it was better to do it, basically. Uh, but you can import 
many files in the middle of your pipeline. You can import Dynamo coordinates. You can import um, Dynamo tomograms catalogs. You can import Eman uh, coordinates or Cryolo. Um, so there are many uh, many steps where you can import and register your your data and metadata if you already have and started. If you have started your project. You don't need to start from the beginning. You can import uh, till series alignment information, XF file from, from IMOD, for example. Um, so this would be the form when you click in execute and finish the output, for example, looking it with Dynamo looks like this, nice uh, viewer with all the colors. Um, you can also view it with Napari and there are, you can view with Iman, uh, you can view, this is Tomobis. Tomobis is a uh, development, house development viewer, which has this uh, nice uh, orientation uh, information. So you can see that it's not only 3D coordinates, but 3D oriented coordinates. Um, right, um, next step will be to enter rely on prepare. Uh, if you're not familiar with rely on, what Reliant does is basically prepares all the data to be able to do um, uh, subtomogram averaging by going back to the TIL series. So for this, it needs a bunch of data, metadata, CTF information, coordinates, and TIL series with alignment information. And then all these kind of options uh, telling what has happened when you reconstruct the tomogram. Um, so when you execute this, the output are reliant particles, which are these reliant pseudo subtomograms. But we have decided to output also uh, the projected 2D coordinates. And the type of this output is a set of landmark models, which you can consider them the time of fiducial. It's the same item. And basically, these are coordinates on each of the tilts. And the interest of this is that you can see where your 3D coordinates have end up in your tilt series, in each of the tilts. So this is not animated, but um, you should uh, click in, in IMO trying to go from lower tilts to higher tilts. And you should see that these um, green circles following the signal and, and making sense of your of the trajectory of, of the signal with the coordinates. Um, also, note that relying for um, is tightly coupled with with IMOD files, and we haven't used IMOD here in the pipeline. So we are able to recreate and mimic IMOD files, uh, regardless you have to use Artomo or other non-IMOD program to do the T series alignment. The same happened with the CTF. We are able to um, recreate the CTF information for Reliant. Uh, so finally, if you go and try to reconstruct without any refinement, just uh, something that because the 3D coordinates were already kind of nice place and oriented, you can get something already shaping the, the HIV capsid and having some making some sense of the data. Um, this is far from idea. It's just been for data, just one series, so not an ideal result, but this is actually what what ended up being produced. So not now let's aim for um real um aiming for optimal results. And this is basically trying to do relying on photomography inside the CPM. Uh, this is dealing with HIV capsid, the same data set as shown before. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the steps, but just some of them. I think first one is, uh, yeah, the workflow is like this, is a kind of big workflow. And I'm going to stop in this um, initial model. So you get this, this is dealing with five uh, till series. Of the of that data set, and you can get already some kind of nice structure, um, initial volume for for the capsid. Um, then, if this apply operation is um, 
it's a stepping reliant that is uh, basically moves the coordinates, uh, taking into account the orientation of those coordinates. Uh, so you want to move them, uh, let's say you have these particles around the capsid and you want to move them towards um, the external part of the capsid. It's not just shifting X and Y or Z, adding plus one, or it's just uh, taking into account their orientation. So Reliant has this nice method, but sometimes it's hard to decide which value to enter here in in in, in Z, for example. They, they recommend to enter... 2.75 pixels of shift in set, but it's hard to come up with this value. So when 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 it's hard to define to to decide on a value, and if possible, we we usually provide a, um, wizards, and in this case, this wizard um, is showing you the mask you're going to use for uh, future refinement and the average. Uh, produced by a previous refinement. And then you can slide these uh, slides up and down and make the, the mask coincide with the, with the refined map. And then you can, you can end up with a, a better value. It will assist you to get the value. So we will go farther down the pipeline. We have these three other methods that very quickly, uh, I'll show you the FSC. You know, we reach uh, 3.9 Armstrong's um, resolution, which is kind of what we what we rely on guys uh, report in their tutorial. I think this is a bit higher. Um, know that this is just before CTF and T-series refinement. We haven't gone through that part of the pipeline. Uh, this is just after binning one refinement and yeah, binning one refinement. Um, so when you see this map in 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 Chimera, you can see um, this. Um, you can see already alpha helices, and you, you know you have got a decent result of the the capsid already. That makes sense. And for example, when you use this third protocol, which is the map back provided by XMIP, then you can map your reference or your um, subtomogram average back to the tomogram. Um, and then trying to go to that other part of, of, of the workflow when you start making sense of the geography of the of the tomogram and, and where your things are placed uh, physically in your sample. Another um, functionality that will be kind of hard to 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 do without the Scipion is what we call the single particle analysis leap. So this is this part of uh, is just importing tomograms using cryolo for picking and then cutting out the the particles uh, with him and tomo. So basically here we have a bunch of sub tomograms and there is a chance to go to single particle analysis, in this case using XTOMO, XMIP TOMO, um, which projects the subtomograms, uh, averaging um, the central slices as many as you want, um, creating 2D particles. Those 2D particles, in this case, to be fed to rely on, you need to simulate a kind of CTF. So we are faking here 2D particles. Um, and then you can run reliant 2D classification or CryoSpark 2D classification or XMIP, whatever 2D classification you, you want, or maybe the three of them. Um, and then you, you can use, in this case, uh, a 2D classes selector to select the good classes. And with this subset, then you can go back to the 3D world. And then you have pruned your data, just uh, um, leaving out some some particles that probably cryolo um, identify as particles, but they were actually false positives. So you can go and, and then you can do initial volumes here, or you can do whatever SPA. Um, obviously, you're not going to reach a high resolution in SPA because this is fake data, but it will help you to prune your data in, in SPA. Um, note that there's another option to SPA5 
uh, I call it this way, tomograms as well. So you can generate micrographs from tomograms and those micrographs can be used for picking. And then you can go back to 3D uh, coordinates in tomograms as well. So recent work, we are currently working on Iman per particle per tilt um, processing. And this is the FSC we recently got trying to process the same data set as the HIV. So the same as the uh, I showed you for the relying on for tutorial. And so you can see there's already some uh, a structure there, uh, but we haven't been able to reach Nyquist at beginning two. So, I mean, it's, it's our fault, I don't know, uh, but it's a work in progress and, and we will release this uh, very soon. So you will be able to do Reliant or even per particle per tilt or Susan Tomo, which is already integrated as well. Right, current status and future work. Um, we haven't made the announcement, but it doesn't mean it's not available. So we kind of went silently releasing uh, plugins and most of them are already available through the proving manager. So this is a screenshot of today today's plugin manager, and you can see our Tomo is exclusively Tomo our tomography plugin. System is a mixed plugin. It brings most of the SPA methods, but it brings also the CTF uh, estimation for the series. Uh, Dynamo is already there, and farther down you have uh, most of them uh, as well. So Iman, as I said, uh, per particle uh, approach is almost ready. We'll probably be released in, in weeks. Uh, XMIP team is implementing so tomogram averaging methods. And, and the newest and revolutionary and cool new method that will appear whenever it happens will also be integrated. So it's not that we are just uh, just limited to, to a set of methods. It's just that we can extend this easily with the next um, uh, method and it will be available here in the plugin manager the same way. So uh, in terms of training and resources, uh, you have um, a CPN documentation site here. I'm not sure if I can make you this, uh, I can share this presentation to or paste this in the chat if you need them. Uh, we have a YouTube channel uh, with many videos and tutorials, even courses are there. We have an in bio biocomputing unit. We announce uh, yearly based courses for single particle analysis, tomography, modeling, uh, courses or more um, meetings or facilities, and a new branch that we are working in, which is flexibility. Uh, we have a Discord uh, workspace where you can find many users and, and developers and beta testers, especially for tomography. And so I left this part. And yeah, with this, um, I want to thank uh, many people that has have made this uh, possible. Obviously, IPs uh, guiding us and providing us uh, support. Uh, many developers of our group and, and some not in our group, like Grigory Sharov, for example, in, uh, at MRC. Um, IT support, beta testers, a lot of them uh, uh, helping us to, to find bugs and, and use uh, CPN. CPN Tom has been used for more than two years, I guess. Um, and and uh, a growing community of developers. Uh, especially for tomography, some of them have involved in integrating their own software like CryoCare or, or Define there, PySec as well, Antonio Martinez, um, and yeah, and all the funders. So with this, uh, thank you, uh, and I'm open for any questions. <clears throat> thank you very much. And uh, questions, we have the, uh, this, swanky new q and a window that you can use to ask questions um so uh, you should be able to ask there i think um you I think we can still do the raise your hand also if you've got uh, a question and you 
uh, I can call on you and on me. Uh, I had a couple of questions. I um, I, I see that uh, you're constantly adding new titles and new. How are you um, sort of keeping up with all of these different packages? Because I mean, I think you know, uh, it, it's the development is just off the charts busy. I mean, cryo et right now, it's got to be. You know, by the time you get something integrated, I'm sure like the developers made a new version and you've got to go and, you know, check. Yeah. In. yeah. So, um, so there are, there are a couple of things that help to keep this up to date. Um, one is we try to make the installation. So Zipkin tries to do the installation and try to make the more versatile installation as possible. So thinking about future updates, uh, which we just changing a couple of constants for the version and so on, uh, we probably are able to install the, the new version. So we think when we do the installation of, of that software, we try to design it in the way that, that new versions should be easy to just update. The second thing would be that we are, uh, we are tests for each of the software and the plugins. So once we are told that there's an update of this software, we update the installation and then we run the test. And this is a way to be sure that uh, at least with the recent version, everything is working or if not, then we need to look at, at the problem and try to integrate. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, for example, CryoSpark for single particle analysis, they are quite uh, live and agile integrating uh, stuff. And, and then we need to keep up, up to date with the with the software. Another thing we try to do in some cases with success is in some others without it, is trying to engage the developers. The best formula would be for the developers to engage with uh, with uh, Scipion and trying to maintain their plugin. Um, and we, we actually offer a co-developing schema where we do the Scipion part, which they are not familiar with, but they can take care of their own part, like launching their software. What are the command preparing their metadata and all this? But yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's an effort. Yeah. 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 Uh, we had a question in the Q and A. Uh, what about integration of Warp M? I um, I haven't followed that project too much. I know that it's mostly used on Windows. I don't know if there's a Linux version. Uh, can you say anything about that? Yeah. Uh, we are basically waiting for this to happen. <laughs> um, so the thing is, Scipion and most of the, Scipion can run on Windows. So it's, Scipion is a, a basic Conda, Python Conda environment, and it's not uh, something hard to, to be able to install it on Windows. But the problem is all the companions of Scipion, Scipion itself, just by itself, it doesn't do anything. It needs from, from the rest of the software. And then it's a matter of how you mix uh, Warp or M, which is a Windows-based uh, uh, software with the rest that are, or the majority of the rest that are not Linux-based. So there is this option to use Windows Linux system on Windows, but uh, I mean, it's possible we have people using the CPN and all the companions of this with, with in Windows, and we can explore this, but actually, I mean, as soon as Dimitri Tagunov, I think, mentioned somewhere in Twitter, I think, that he will migrate Warp and M, at least the library part, not the GUI, to mm -hmm. Linux. As soon as this is available, it will be there for sure, because it's a, it's a very nice software that we will we are willing to integrate. Yeah, I guess in theory, you could use some external Windows instance or maybe even like a, a cloud instance of, of Windows, right? Where you could have a staged version of Warp and then push the data process, pull it back. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of hoops to jump through. It might be easier just to port the software to Linux. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've read a thread that even it's possible to use Wine which is why is this Linux um, yeah. sol solution for running Windows program and some someone has managed, but for me it was complicated to set it up. You need to, I, I mean, the main problem is not, it's not that 
it's a Windows program. It's, it needs to talk to your GPU, and that makes things more complicated. And even if you manage to do it, I'm concerned about the performance. So, yeah, another solution would be to have a plugin for Windows and then just move from one Linux machine to Windows machine. So, yeah, we've heard good things about Windows subsystem for Linux. I think Matt just chimed in that it, uh, yeah. you know, he, he's had good good results mm -hmm. with that as well. We haven't officially dove in as far as like supporting software on the Windows subsystem for Linux, but um, initially it was, you know, clunky and slow, but all things sort of start out clunky and slow and it's improved fairly dramatically recently. So it's something we're looking at, I think, particularly with, uh, you know, CentOS's sort of transition, you know, Red Hat sort of opening it up and making it more of a open development and less of a sort of direct clone of RHEL. People are moving off into, you know, Ubuntu and other distros. So it could make it a little uh, more yeah. appealing to support something like that. And yeah, Cipian could work within that. One of the other questions we had was, uh, somebody asked was one that I also had. We had a request from a user for micro ED workflows. I saw some repos out there. I went out and played around, uh, installed some of those in the sort of development channel. Um, yeah. What are the uh, plans to implement micro ED under uh, the Cipian workflows? So micro ED, uh, all I know is that this is the outcome of a PhD student in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it integrated, so he created the whole model for micro ED and he integrated dials and the other I cannot remember. Uh, so this is a working set of uh, at least initial plugins for, for micro ED. And I recently have a look at it and there was some, so it's like you had, you had to have two different installations. So you can go to the repository and install that part, but you will need two different recipients, uh, the micro ED one and the other. So I recently had a look and with a couple of small changes, they could live together in a single installation. And I think that would be uh, the, the way to go, just adapt the micro ID part to be able to be installed in the same installation as single particle analysis, tomography, and all this. Uh, at least for a facility, it makes sense because facilities just use all these techniques and may make sense to do the cryo, the, the micro ID part as well in the CPM everything in the same place. Yeah, they use all of a lot of common packages and file formats as well. So you could take advantage of that. I, yeah, in, in playing with it, I saw that it it needed to stand alone. It reset some of the data pads and some of the things that, uh, yeah. so, so, but, um, okay. So it sounds like uh, early stages, students are working on it. Someday it should be uh, possible to yeah, integrate I think, that into the production. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the student has finished, so it's his PhD, he finished. Um, but we are not actively developing that part. So hmm. either someone can take uh, over this role and or, or we might end up just being stuck there. I don't know. Yeah, proof of concept. Somebody yeah. can take that work and build on hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right, all right, <clears throat> great. Well, for the SP Grid users out there, we have a new version of Scipion that has a lot of the Tomo plugins installed, ready to go. I made it available this morning. Uh, it's pretty big. Like uh, I think it's pushing 100 gigs with all of the plugins and everything because the Conda packages, you know, each Conda install includes like the whole world basically yeah. under there, which uh, you know, I think I. Just checked it. It's 1.2 million files, which yeah. is a lot. Oh my God. But uh, I, I did clean it up a little bit. But um, you know, that's that's just how these Conda installs are going these days. They are gigantic. Um, uh, within Conda itself, it does like use hard legs to kind of manage some of these things, so it can get some, I don't know, a little bit better. But it's not. It's still a lot. But it looks like a lot of the Tomo functionality is like passing and looking good. And, uh, you know, we're actively working with Pablo. If we've got users who are using this and they've got functionality that is currently like working or uh, not working, but needs a little tune up, 
we can make that happen. So um, definitely uh, reach out if you'd like to get that in your install. I know that there's some users on the call who've already reached out to me, so I'll make sure that that gets into theirs and we can get that working and uh, uh, get that tuned up and optimized for uh, Tomo workflows because I think it's a nice tool. Um, uh, with that, uh, Pablo, thank you very much. Uh, as always, it's uh, it's impressive to see that much software sort of wrangled within. I think um, you know, Scipion is probably the only other thing out there that like installs as much software as SP Grid does. As SP Grid. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah. we are the little brother of SP Grid in that sense, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I think uh, I have an appreciation for what you're trying to do, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not easy, but it's it's looking pretty good. So, great. Okay. Thank uh, you, Jason. All right. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for joining.